Right, in this video, we're going to have a quick look, an overview on how to create a button on the sales screen of the EPOS. Now, um, for you to be able to do that, you need to have the certain permissions to do that. Um, some users will basically can be limited to what they can do, uh, as other users and uh, members of staff can do all sorts of other options on the system. So I'm going to sign in as the manager, and we're straight away onto the sales screen. Bunch of buttons. And they're all numbered. So, for example, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and that will be number eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So, if I press shift on here, it should be number fifteen. As you can see, button fifteen. So they're all numbered. And what I tend to do is is basically just um, pick a number, uh, pick a, a button, and I press shift and press it. And that's button number 63. I could copy that button, and the next button along would be number 64, and I press paste. Now, what it's done is it's duplicated the, the button for over here. So you can see if I press shift and press the button, it creates a new button number 64. It's even t copied the commands and everything over as well. So, uh, what you can do though in the back office is move the buttons around. So, for example, if I press uh, shift and press receipt. We are currently on screen page zero. That's the screen page we're currently on at the moment. So if I go to the manage the screen, go to the back office, main menu, utilities, system menu, and screens, and screen designer. Now, if, if you've got an awful lot of products on the system, it might take a little while to load up. So give it time. Eventually, it will actually prompt up with the screen. If there's a lot of products on, it will prompt you and say it can't load them all. I think you might find that on this EPOS, it may just come up with that particular message. The more products you have on, the more buttons you have on, the longer it takes to load the page up. Right, press OK. Bear with me one second as it catches up with itself. Now, we are on screen page zero already, and there's that button I created earlier. Now, you've got some options here that you can basically change a, a few things in the screen designer you can duplicate buttons change the commands of the buttons move them around the screen i tend to just use it for the basics really and just move the buttons to where i want them to be so i've created the button that i want to play with and i'm going to actually drag it with my mouse you can see it's moving the blocks and i'm just going to stick it to here so that's what i fancy moving it to so that's the basics of the screen designer um if you actually right mouse click on it it does give you the option to resize the button and you can delete it if you want or edit the button if you so wish to. Um, if we go in and edit the button, it gives you the option to change the command line, to change the background of the button, the color of the button, and the color of the text that's within the button, as well as change the actual font style in here as well. And if you want to, you can password protect the button as well. So what I could do is I could make this button a, a product. So I could go into PLU, and then I could search for a product. And uh, for example, I could just just search for something. I'm not sure what's on here actually, but yeah, there we go. So I could choose sale and state, click it, accept it. And do you want to use the PLU's description as the button's name? Yes, I do. And it will change it to sale and stake. And I could, if I want to, I can change the color of the background to say red and change the color of the text to say black. And I press OK and I save that. And you can see now it is in there. Now, obviously, when you save this and go back to the sales screen, the actual text will refit with inside that button. So I'm going to save that at the moment. No, I don't want to continue editing the buttons. I now close it. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Oh, no, I don't want to quit the system. Previous menu, previous menu, main menu, sales review, sales mode. So what we're basically going to do now is go back into sales mode, sign in, and you will see what's changed on that button using the screen designer. Now I don't I don't particularly use it all that much to be honest. I, I use it now and again to rearrange the buttons on the screen if I need to. But other than that, I tend to uh, play around with the, but, the button settings from the sales screen itself. And as I say, you've got to have certain privileges to be able to do that. So I'm going to log in as manager, and you can see now, you can see sale on stake is, is actually nice nicely inside the button and you can see I've actually moved it from a blue button that was over here somewhere and I've moved it over here. Now if I want to I can press shift and press on the button. As you can see here we're still on screen page zero. That is the product code that's against uh, the sale on stake. If, again I can still go in here 
and change it. So, for example, if I do stake again, you'll see it says still on sell on stake, and there's a product code. Or maybe I want to change it to stake pie. So I select it, accept it. Do you want to use the PLU description for the button? If you move that out of the way, I can show you. Just keep an eye on this bit here. Press yes, and it changes it to stake pie. I can then change the text color, and I can make it yellow, for example. And maybe make the button black, like that. Press OK, and if I want to, I can change the size of the font. It will resize it automatically anyway if it's too too big. For example, I can choose that font there and press OK. And then, as you can see, it's changed it here, and I can save it. That's it saved. So if I press Steak Pie, it comes up with an option. Do I want it with potatoes and chips? I want it with chips. There we go, £8.50. Now, if I don't want this button anymore, I can simply just... Hold, uh, hold down control and press it and it will delete the button completely from the sales screen but before we just do that I'm going to press shift again and press the button I'm going to copy the button and then we're on button 61 but watch when I press the button before number 60 and then press paste there you go it's move it to 60 press shift again and I can press 59 here we go and paste the button and there we go, so I've duplicated it again. Now watch, if I press the control button and press the button, uh, press the mouse button, you'll see I can delete the actual button. So I'm holding down control and then pressing the mouse button, like so, or just touching it with your EPOS with your finger, and you're deleting the button as well. So again, go into shift, we'll take a quick look at it. We're on screen page zero, button 59. The product code that we're using, you have to allocate the product from here. If you use the drop down menu you've got loads of command lines but we can go through that another day in another video and we can hide the button if we, we want to. We can add a picture so we can have a picture of a steak pie if we want to. Uh, we can change it from theme to normal which just makes it squared rather than angled in the corners and uh, you can password protect the button if you want to to stop people from using it so I could put in say 4545 save that button so if I press Steak Pie, it'll ask you for a password, 4545, and then press Confirm. And you can see there, it's giving me the option again with chips, because I like chips. Um, press and Shift again and back into the button. There is another thing here that says um, Save to Screens. Obviously what that will do is, if you create the button and press Save to All Screens, it will actually save it to every screen within the EPOS. Uh, that can cause problems, so be careful what you're doing with that button. Allow terminals is a choice of which terminals that you want to use that button for. So you can restrict it. So if you've got a lot of EPOSs within the same network, you can restrict them to which EPOS that you want this button particularly sent to. At the moment, I'm just going to close that and save. And then I'm going to go and press Control and press the button. And I'm going to delete it and press it twice. So I'm just going to actually delete that from the sales screen by just cancelling the order as well programming checks. So that's the end of the video. Any problems, just please email me at servicedept.metric.co.uk. Thanks for watching.